Hello and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your City, filmed right here in the Brewery Arts Center in Carson City. I'm Courtney Bloomer and my guest this week is one of our supervisors, Mr. Jim Shirk. Thank you for joining us this week. Thank you for having me. Let's get started. Tell everybody just a little bit about yourself and what made you want to be a supervisor? A little bit about myself. I came from Incline Village about 15 years ago. I love the outdoors. I love hiking, skiing, and, and just experience the great outdoors. I, I did Mount Whitney. Um, I came down to Carson City, always been active in politics um, from my early days. My dad got me started, and uh, I remember going to campaigns with him. So I think for me in general, um, politics is not necessarily politics. It's serving the community and it's helping your community and just doing the right thing. Um, as many th people may know, uh, I'm known for my bright colored shirts and <laughs> my socks as well. Oh yeah, check out those socks. Yes, those so are bright. <laughs> I think for, for me, basically, I think what I enjoy most out of life is time spent with my wife. Uh, I, love, I love her and uh, I really thank her for being my wife. And, and supporting you in your, yes. in your yes. endeavors here in, in uh, politics in Carson yes. City. All right, so one of the highlights of uh, one of the recent board meetings was uh, the city appointing a new treasurer. Um, there was uh, a couple different candidates available for that position, and you ended up supporting uh, finance uh, director Nick Providenti for that position. That didn't go through. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes. I. First off, I contacted all the candidates and I met one-on-one -on -one with them, just us, and we met um, at Starbucks or another location and so forth. So their resumes were quite surprising. It was overwhelming what was in their package. All of them uh, were, I think, qualified. At the board meeting when they had the interview with all the Board of Supervisors, I think all of them did extremely well. For me personally, Nick just stood above the others slightly. And for that reason, I voted for Nick. Now, he didn't win, I, I understand that, and I go along with the process, and I'm okay with that. Uh, even after the meeting, I went over to Gail and said, congratulations, and just this morning, I went into the treasurer's office, shook her hand, and said, welcome aboard. So she's on the job now? She's on you've, the job, she's already working at it. So it's, uh, that was a fast process, so she's already in there. So again, congratulations, Gail. All right, that was a busy board meeting. That was. At the same meeting, um, there was uh, some some motions on the Shoals Ranch project. Yes. Uh, tell us about that project. What's what's Shoals Ranch? How is this going to impact our community? This is the first project of this nature coming through the Board of Supervisors, or even for Carson City. It's a limited, um, I guess you could say, district, where what the developer is doing is taking part of the project and dedicating it to public access which the parks and recreation or the city itself will control. There is an expense to this. It's similar to a homeowner association, what everyone's familiar with in this. But this is a district, and the property owners here will have an assessment put on their property tax bill. That will cover 70% of the cost of maintaining this, and the cost for that area is roughly about $200,000. So property owners will pay 70% of that. The 30% of the remaining portion of that uh, funding will come from the city, which all taxpayers contribute to. But keep in mind, this is an area that has soccer, basketball, um, some water features, and it's open to the public and the residents who live there. I think what also came out of this board meeting, which was kind of interesting, was the Carson City Municipal to, uh, Code 17, which oversees the limited access uh, and district improvement district. And this is coming back. All board members ask that the Title 17 come back to the board member as an agenda item so we can discuss it. We need to modify, make some corrections in that wordy, uh, wordage of the title because it doesn't really allow for expansion or uh, uh, the means to correct things that's in the limited district. So this gives us a little opportunity for outs and ins and just make a little variance for that. So I think that's a good thing and the board I think it favors that coming back to us. So I'm looking forward to that. Now you mentioned that this was the first of this type of districts. Do you see um, additional districts coming eventually? That's a great question too because I asked the same <laughs> one and uh, from what I've been told um, at this juncture there is nothing. There's two more projects coming forward. One is uh, 40 homes, the other one is 10 but at this time 
this would probably be the first one that Carson City has done. Now, I have contacted uh, Douglas County and talked to their uh, Parks, and Rec and Pub Parks and Recs and their Public Works developer down there, and they've had some success. They gave some great hints of how, what to do and what to look for, which they forwarded uh, to myself and to Public Works and to Parks and Recs. And so that helps. So other areas and communities are doing it, but this is our first, and it's a little um, nerve-wracking in some sense, and it's a little, honestly, we don't know if it's going to be successful. We, I, I certainly hope it is, and I think everything is in line to make it successful, but I think overseeing it from uh, Public Works and the Parks and Recs will help immensely, and we'll get updates on that as we go along. Great. Um, yeah. So, so some people in Carson City may not know uh, the Board of Supervisors is actually a number of boards that you guys serve on. You're the Board of Supervisors, you're the Board of Health, you're the Redevelopment Authority. You reconvene throughout the day as, as these different entities Correct. at the meetings. Um, one of the things that happened last week was that Redevelopment Authority. Correct. Uh, there's a pot of money that is available for Carson City to use for things like um, encouraging businesses and things like that. How would you, uh, as part of that Redevelopment Authority, uh, want to spend that money here in Carson City? You know, I think uh, first off and foremost, one of the projects coming forward is a Third Street um, project, which is funded entirely through redevelopment. And for people who don't know what the Third Street project is, uh, uh, people are, are we're, right. we're considering closing yes. Third Street and turning that into, into sort of a, a little park space. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> I, I think, I think it's, uh, it's going to have outdoor concert. It has a water feature there, and it's between uh, Frick and Fox, if I'm saying that correctly, and Mom and Pops. That whole street will be closed down. It'll be accessed by the walking public only, not cars and, and, and so forth. So it will be, and it's right across from the legislature building. It will have, and they're going to redesign that roadway and access to it. It'll have better access. But that in itself is a great venue for Carson City. And this is how the funding from redevelopment should be spent. I think that's great. I think what we need to do is, um, speaking of the Brewery Arts Center, and since we're here, uh, I think we need to look at the Brewery Arts Center as a something we could fund. Um, it's been under new leadership for the past year and a half, and basically, and we've come, they've come a long way in where they're going and what they're doing in the community. And I know they have conceptual drawings where they will, I believe the street is Minnesota, where they would take that street out and join the two properties into one uh, large property. They will put some outdoor amphitheater. Uh, they will have outdoor seating, and it would be, I think, this is where the board should really focus on in the near future uh, after Third Street's done. I think the Brewery Arts Center, we should expand this. It would be the cultural center of Carson City. We can have events here. I just think it would be really, really a unique uh, feature for Carson City. And it's a place where the arts and culture can be central, centrally located within our community. And I can't think of a better place than the Brewery Arts Center. Absolutely. And so that's one idea for some redevelopment yes. down the road. We've got yeah. some other some other projects that are happening uh, ahead of that, like you mentioned, Third Street. I've, right. I've heard rumors of, of a Curry Street uh, redevelopment project. A little bit there, yes. Too. yes. Uh, but I think this Brewery Arts Center idea is, is really got some merit to it. Maybe we can move that forward. Yes. Um, all right. So this was a very busy board meeting last week. Uh, they all seem to be <laughs> they busy. They all seem to be busy. Um, but just to recap, um, by the time you got all the way down to item 25A on the agenda, uh, they, they tabled that and uh, it had to do with water and sewer hookup fees. Right. Why was that removed? Is it coming back? Um, it possibly could. I think there is right now the reason it was removed for uh, precautionary measures only. There could be a violation of the open meeting law. And, and for those that don't know, the open meeting violation law would be where three board members communicate about an agenda item, which is you can't do. That's what they call the open meeting law. So at this juncture, it could possibly, um, at some juncture, let me, we could look at it and say um, what happened here is not right, and that's why it was removed as a precautionary measure only to make sure that we're okay. Um, it will be coming back to the board, I'm sure, in what fashion and when, I'm not sure. But what, what I would like to expand on a little bit, um, even after this was discussed, um, why we removed it, later in the meeting, the public works came to us and, and discussed water 
and sewer and the facilities themselves. And they're looking for citizens to reduce their water consumption by 10%. And that goes along with Governor Sandoval's uh, drought measures that he put in place here. So citizens will be asked to reduce water by 10%. So that's something that didn't really make the agenda but I thought I'd pass that along. Absolutely, with the drought yes. that has been ongoing in our region, my understanding is we're in a little better shape than California, but correct. we certainly wanna, wanna work on conserving. Absolutely, you're correct. So, um, so this water and sewer uh, hookup fees, you think they will be uh, on, the, on the agenda at some point? but but didn't didn't get past at this last board yeah meeting. i think it will come back uh they they have to i believe uh, because i think it's a very um the structure itself needs to come back because we reduced our rates significantly in 2009 from roughly 300 uh, no sorry from three thousand dollars example to five hundred dollars and other surrounding communities are charging anywhere from three thousand to seven thousand dollars for these hookups i think it's imperative that this come back to the board, that we look at this uh, assessment, and those funds, I believe, should go into the reserve for future improvements and upgrades at our facility, whether it's water or sewer. That's where I think the money should be diverted. I, I'm not sure where it will go at, until the agenda comes back, but I think it will come back in a short period of time. Uh, speaking of board meetings, uh, you've attended them now for, for a while. You're yes. not the newest person on the board anymore. Thank goodness. <laughs> What are some changes that you would like to see made to board meetings that you think would uh, streamline the process, make it more uh, accessible to the public, any kind of changes that you think would benefit? I think there's room for improvement. Um, I think that the first one is, you know, we get our agenda packet usually on a Thursday evening. So that leaves us um, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we have the board meeting on Thursday. So that's four days. Some people may say, well, you have the weekend. Well, staff's not available on the weekend, so you can't uh, really access anything. Uh, I think the agenda package should come to us sooner. I think that would be helpful. Um, right now we have Moss Adams working with city staff, streamlining some process, and a great example is the uh, building permits uh, process, and they're streamlining that. I think Moss Adams could look at it with their lean, I think it's called the lean um, function or something like that, and we could look at the agenda for board members and how Moss Adams could improve that with city staff as well. Um, I think the most important one here is, as an example, if I ask you a question, if you were city staff, and I forward you a question about uh, an agenda item, and you respond to me, that's great, it's helpful to me, but what is not helpful is that any and, any and all other board members who ask a question and obtain information from, from city staff, that is not shared with the board. Now, would it be an open meeting violation law? Absolutely not, because if staff responds to each board member independently or BCC'd them, the information, not necessarily where the question came from or what board member, but anything that's information pertinent to this agenda item, I believe should be shared with all board members regardless of who asks the question. Um, I think um, it is imperative that we get information even if, even if we don't have the ability to ask the question or the time frame to ask the question or if we didn't think to ask, however you want to put that, I think all information should be shared equally and openly with all board members. Um, I think something else that could be uh, at the board meeting, I think which really helps the community in itself, uh, board members who serve on committees or commissions or um, any other meetings that they attend, I think we, the board and the public should get upgrades from what an example is uh, the Visitors Bureau have a meeting or the Planning Commission, and we have board members sit on those. I think they should upgrade the other board members and the community. And finally, I think one, one area that could really help the community is the mayor attends a lot of events as the city representative. I think those events should be brought up in the board meeting, and I think they should be posted on our website. That gives the opportunity for citizens to attend these great events, and he, he does it. He does a marvelous job at these events. I, he does everything, and it, he does a really good job. But I just think citizens would like to know where they're at and they, so they can attend. What kind of uh, events are you talking about here? Well, they just had one at uh, Senior Citizen uh, where he gave an award over there for the outstanding service he's done. Um, he, he does it on a regular basis. Um, he just did the, um, the military at the legislature building. He went there for the veterans who served in the Afghanistan war. 
Um, and it's, if you're not aware of where all those are, I, I believe other board members would like to attend also. I think they're great events for the city, and I think it's great. It, it presents the community to the public in such a fashion. I think, I think he does a great job. Trouble is knowing where they're at and what time to attend. Right. There are a number of things that take place that, right. that board members and, and also the mayor attend, and many of those are public events uh, as well. Um, how, how do you think, um, what do you think would be the best avenue for communicating that information to the public in a way that would be effective and reach, uh, reach that intended audience? Well, uh, I think it could start at the board level. Where there could be, because at an agenda item, it's called open discussion. You can say anything you want at that juncture. And I think it should be posted on our city website as well. I, I, I think any avenue to get out to the public what's going on in their community is great. And how we get there, it could be Facebook, it could be our website, it could be Twitter, uh, or any other social media avenues. I think they're all there for public access. Okay, now you just brought up Twitter. Um, we've got a new campaign that's starting. Hashtag Proud Carson. Tell us about this. I wish I could. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I've got the flyer on it. Okay. Uh, when I asked the question about it, I didn't get answers. Uh, I know there's a um, meeting on April 20th, Monday at 1230, and the mayors uh, will make an announcement what that announcement is. I personally do not know. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I will be in attendance. I've seen already citizens wearing that Carson Proud hashtag uh, t-shirt. I don't know exactly what it's about that announcement, uh, but that announcement will come prior to the unveiling of the conceptual drawings of the downtown uh, project. Which, by the way, if I may just uh, take a brief moment here, uh, I believe that citizens, th these meetings about the conceptual drawings about downtown narrowing of Carson Street are very, very important to attend. And here's the reason why. This project is moving forward. Now granted, I did not vote in favor of the project, nor did I vote in favor of the tax that will fund the project. But I fully support the project, and I want to make sure it's done successfully and it's done right, because it is moving forward. And so we need citizens to come down and have their input and put, put their, t basically put their two cents in, if I may say that in such a fashion. But it is imperative that people get motivated about this and get involved because this project is coming forward. And you probably saw in just this morning's newspaper, uh, there was an article about the Capitol Mall project coming forward, coinciding with maybe the uh, conceptual drawings of downtown. I'm not sure, uh, I'll learn at that meeting on Monday, but that's, um, that's coming forward. And that's what the article said, in case people are not aware of it, the Capitol Mall project is moving forward to the Planning Commission, and it will be on their agenda for May 27th. And this is, as far as I know, it's privately funded. It's not city uh, funded in any aspect that I know of right now. It could change, I'm not sure. And it's going to have a hotel, it's going to have parking structures, it's going to have retail, and uh, it's going to change the complex of the city itself. It's right behind the Nugget, and there will be a parking structure on Carson Street uh, if I remember the drawings correctly, uh, and it will have a bridge across. I don't know if that's still in the, pro in the project or not, I'm not sure, but it was in the early phases. So I think um, being involved is really, really important for citizens to become involved. And I, I think it's, I think it's, it's moving forward. Uh, I think you should be involved. And uh, talking about being involved, the first of those meetings, April 20th, um, the city is calling them theming workshops. Yes. Um, Tell, for people who may not know, tell them what does that mean? What are we, what are we going to discuss at, at these meetings? Well, I think what you will see is you will have city staff present. They will have uh, conceptual drawings, maybe uh, quite large projects or pictures of the project. And I think it's where staff can answer the questions about what each, each little incident, not incident, um, each little artistic value the drawings have and what it represents. Uh, a great example, if you look at um, the new, uh, is it two, uh, Tahoe Brewing Company on Carson Street? Uh -huh. Okay. Have you seen the sidewalk they put adjacent to that on, yeah. the, on the side street? Yeah, okay. They're building that patio Correct. on the side, right? Correct. That is a prime example of what downtown Carson Street is going to look like. The pavers, the, the seating outside, that's probably a great example of it. 
because that's tied into Carson Street from what I was told from Public Works. That's kind of the same. Um, Aesthetic. Thank you. Yeah. Aesthetics. <laughs> I knew I liked working with you. <laughs> yes, and that's a great example. And so, uh, and this will go on Curry Street as well and Carson Street. And so the Carson City Mall project uh, probably will tie into it in some fashion. So I, I think the workshop itself, um, people need to attend, need to, need, to, need to voice their opinion. So this will create a, a whole unified look for the downtown area. I think it's going to change the complexity of the city 100%. It's, it's going to go from, um, I hate to say this, a small town community to maybe a bigger type uh, community. You're talking uh, 6,000 parking spaces. You're talking 20,000 square feet of retail and office space over there. You're talking about a, over a 100 room hotel in that complex. I believe there's also a conference center over there. And so it's going to change the complexity of the city quite a bit. From an economic development perspective, though, having those facilities available uh, downtown, do you think that's going to uh, draw more people to Carson City and, and maybe make it so that we have more uh, events here, uh, draw in conferences and things that otherwise right now are maybe happening in Reno or Vegas? I, I believe if, if, it's, if it's done properly and it's done successfully, I think that's every opportunity Carson City has and we should take available every available means to bring everything here um, of that magnitude. And I think it will change and help uh, the tax revenue. It will bring more money to the city and we can make more upgrades. Um, some may argue it's, it is gonna change the downtown. The article it said, itself said there'll be 8,500 visitors on a daily basis here. That's a lot of traffic, that's a lot of people. How that changes the complexity of the city should be interesting to see, but it is moving forward. And I, I must say, this is a, the Capital Mall project is a private venture. It is not asking, at this time, it is not asking for any city funds as, that I know of. So it's all privately funded. Mm -hmm. That's what America is based on, is the ability to do something with the, that you think is right with your own money. And I fully support those. Well, hopefully as things progress, we'll see what kind of changes yeah. uh, happen in, in downtown over the next couple right. of years. We're yeah. still, we're in, the, we're in the theming and design stage right yes. now. We're still about, uh, about uh, I don't know, nine months off from yes. any kind of construction. It so. should break around next year. Um, and so that's, it's moving forward, as I said, and uh, we're gonna make sure it's done right and done properly. Well, we'll look forward to seeing how that yeah. impacts downtown yeah. Carson City. Supervisor Shirk, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. May I just make one plug for sure. the Arbor Day oh, Run? Oh, absolutely. Sorry. Yes, yes, um, yes. I have to participate in this. Uh, according to my daughter, it's the Arbor Day Run, which she's helping put together and organize. And in her capacity as? Shady Tree Council. Thank as, you. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. So if I'm doing it, you have to do it too, Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I look forward to seeing you on the trail. Right. Yeah. Join, join in for the Arbor Day Run and, and right. support, support planting uh, trees and keeping our green space here. In Thank you so City. much for having me. I really appreciate thanks it. Thanks for joining Thank us you. today. And thanks to all of you for joining us for this week's edition of It's Your City. We'll see you again next week. <laughs>